Renee, um, a controversial wrestler who's someone who doesn't shy from an opinion. Uh, old Ryback, aka Ryan Reeves, has been uh, on his Instagram, I would imagine, doing a stream and some very interesting things he's saying. Okay, bring it up. Okay. We're getting people to sign non, uh, non disparagement agreements, NDAs, and non disclosure agreements. Uh, where they'll come to terms on, on the shady things that happen. And here, take some your hush money and go away forever. And uh, that has happened. And what they are finding is there's quite a bit of this. And what I'm there's there's stuff that I have that I've not released. There's stuff, and I'll, I'll give you guys, there's a Caitlin and Triple H story out there. There's a John Cena and Alex Riley story out there. And if the board invests... Well... I actually heard, like, it's a, like a locker room talk, but a story about Alex Riley and Cena. I've heard that same rumor. But there's more to it. Like, the story that I heard, if that were to get out, that would completely jeopardize Cena's Hollywood career. Yep. Big time. Uh, as far as... Caitlin and Triple H didn't Ben when we had Ben on he always talks about there was a time period where Stephanie and Hunter weren't wearing their wedding rings on television or whatever yeah you mentioned that the other night actually which I found interesting yeah and again I always use this believe nothing in what you hear and half of what you see in the wrestling business when it comes to like rumors and innuendo or whatever but I also heard of Stephanie being involved in one of the wrestlers really yeah and this wrestler getting divorced and actually Triple H helping his ex-wife Pay for legal costs. Damn. Again, I'm not naming names or anything, and this is all just, you know, Real rumors and innuendo. But I don't know. Ryback, man, he, he has it out. He's not shy to voice his discontent with the company, right? Especially Vince. Holy Christ. He said yeah. some pretty horrible things. He hates WWE with a passion. Right? But like, when all these stories of Vince came out, I'm sure he was like, see, I told you so. Yeah, um, a few Ryback fans, both of them, uh, they tune into <laughs> our show, and um, they're like, yes, Ryback was right, and he's all like, doubted it. I'm like, nah, Ryback's still pretty crazy. Mm. Well, what's his whole beef with Triple H? Wasn't it like I had heard a story of when I call him Ryan because that's his fucking name. Ryan had broke his ankle or whatever, right? And then he was in FCW. And I guess Hunter came up to him and said, oh, eventually we're going to have to pull the plug on you. Like, you know, if you can't work, you can't. If you're too injured, we'll just have to, or injury prone, we'll just get rid of you. And that's like his big beef with Hunter. Right. I, I didn't hear that before. So, um, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Ryback, when he, you know, when they gave him that gimmick, he was over. Like, I was a fan of his. And then it, after the CM Punk match, Hell in a Cell, it kind of went downhill after that. But, in my opinion, I'm just a fan. To me, he comes across like he thinks he's like a real big deal and he keeps posting on social media that if him and Goldberg was to have a match in AEW it would do, break all box office records. I'm like, really? Well, let's go over some of the stuff that he claims. He claims that WWE controls social media or something. So he's under the impression that he's shadow banned on um twitter 
or Instagram, for example. So, because he's got he's got loads of followers, which to be fair, every wrestler during the WWE time, especially like recent wrestlers, have a good following. But some of the engagement and some of his treats is like sometimes like 20 or 30 people. And he's convinced it's because he's shadow banned on Twitter. So shadow ban is when normally you get a ban, but then you get shadow ban. It's like they've kind of banned your account without you knowing. So people can't see your tweets or your posts as much as people should. I mean, fuck it. Get some engagement on YouTube. How much that engagement is legit? I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's convinced that WWE is out to get him. I mean, it might be. We might be proven. He might be proven right after all this. But he's convinced that he's been blackboarded by WWE. And as far as I know, he's not been blackboarded. Just that no one seems to be interested in him. Or I don't know if some people's offered him some deals and he's like said no to him. I don't know. But yeah, he he kind of blames WWE for everything. And I have to say, just as a fan, I have to say you kind of have to be thankful for WWE for for the platform you've got mm. what's the other he, accusation he makes that they somehow control some of the stories that get leaked or something on some of these news sites that's been around for a while i mean even um for example bradshaw apparently said we've leaked so many stories like full stories to Dave Meltzer, and Dave Meltzer doesn't have a clue that we've been leaking these stories. Really? That's according to Bradshaw. He's like, we've made so much money off Meltzer because they've fooled him. That's according to Bradshaw, JBL. So... Or maybe they do that just to find out who the fucking stooge is in the locker room. That is a good test. Yeah, that's the stooge test, and I forgot which company done that with someone, but they found him out and they fired that person or like they punished him. But yeah, you would imagine someone like Dewey Dewey, there is a stooge test. Because that uh, fucking Bradshaw would accuse me of being a fucking stooge for the dirt sheets. I mean, listen, jerk off. I wouldn't read the fucking things. Just because I was a young kid, right? He, it was a, under the assumption that just because I was young that I was like one of these fucking internet nerds that goes on all these... No, no, that's like the Mike Bucci's of the world. Those are the guys that read the fucking sheets, not me. Yeah, it's... I didn't um, know what the fuck Dave Meltzer was to like 2010. <laughs> but um, I think, say, veteran wrestlers like Bradshaw, I think that's it. I think if they see a young guy, even though you came through, you know, you came through different to a lot of indie guys, your father ran a promotion right. using a legit promotion, for yep. your hope of your youth but i think for bradshaw this was during a time like the early 2000s where the indie scene was starting to pick up a little bit and you had some wrestlers coming in from the indies so i guess because he was a young guy i'm not defending them but i'm just saying from his point of view because you're a younger guy i mean fuck man he was only 19 mm. he might have thought oh here's another young teenager Meltzer, Mark, etc. So that's probably what he was thinking. Right. Could be further from the fucking reality. But yeah. Back uh, the, to the Ryback. Sh- yeah. Um wow. If what he says is true and some of this stuff does eventually come out, I bet you there's some people in WWE like fucking worried, dude. I mean since the 80s we're looking at like at least 40 years worth of time where some of these scandals could happen i mean triple h caitlin that's the first i've heard of that i don't know if you've heard different we've had caitlin on the show she was lovely um obviously sylvan told some stories the other night saying that johnny ace apparently screwed with a diva then fired her within a week or so i'm not laughing at it i'm just it's just hearing the stories like you, you can't believe it, but you can believe it, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. I mean, you know yourself, there's there's some agents in that company. It's like, how are they still in that company? And you've said previous, I'm not going to mention names, but you're, you've said previous. However, the stories hasn't come out about this certain agent. I don't know. And if those stories get out, then there you go. Mm. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, I don't know, it's going to be an exciting few few months ahead to see what what unfolds, right? Because as we speak, there's people coming forward either with the feds or with this um, lawsuit that's just unfolding, right? And I'm sure with every lawsuit, there's going to be some bullshit allegations and bullshit stories, but the whole thing is you have to prove that it happened. You can make all the allegations you want, but it's proof, right? So... Worst case scenario, Renee. What absolute worst case scenario? How does this affect WWE? Is this a point where I don't think so? But is this where WWE could go out of business, or is it a case that will just be a complete wholesale change for that that Ari Emanuel uh, endeavor, etc., completely cleans out WWE and puts their own people in there? That I could see happening. Because I mean, shit that Emanuel guy even was quoted as saying that he would be ready to pull out of Saudi Arabia. If I think be. he did. Right? Yeah. And that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars guaranteed because I think it's like a 10-year deal with, how much do they get paid if, every time they go over? 20, 30 million or some shit? Maybe Something more? stupid, yeah, like stupid amount of money. I mean, we right. had um, flipping uh, Mansour on his first Saudi show. He said it paid for my house. Right. And that was so, one show. <laughs> if he's willing to get rid of that, then Lord knows what he's willing to do. So, because he's the head guy, he's the head guy in charge now, right? Basically, yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting years down the line where Rock ends up. If Rock ends up being one of the top guys, I mean, he's already on the board. Yeah, and don't be fooled. He they brought him back as a full time character. To try to fucking deflect all his Vince stuff. Oh yeah, that's why. Yeah. So, it's kind of worked. I mean, the the Vince stuff isn't as big as what it was, say, a few weeks ago. Because you know, well, when we st- wait till the next fucking headline hits, right? Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's this is ongoing situation. Wait till before WrestleMania. Well, that's what a few people's been saying. They said something big's going to drop before Mania, and. Uh. I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah. And it's like the other day I said wrestling was cold. Well, this is what I meant. I mean, if you're looking at WWE, well, okay. But how's uh, AEW's business compared to several years ago? How's New Japan's business compared to several years? I mean, fuck. What was it? Six, seven years ago, the Bullet Club was the hottest thing. I mean, hot topic. The Bullet Club t-shirt was one of their hottest sellers. Yeah. New Japan was selling out the fucking garden and they were doing good business in every arena show they did in North America. How about now? That's what I meant by it's cold. You know? Yeah. How's the like AEW so, attendance? <laughs> <laughs> I think they've got a sellout next week or the week after for Revolution because that's Sting's last match. Well, there you go. It's a special well, fucking day. Yeah. And it's, where is it? It's is it in the Carolinas? Well, I think so. It's like one of the old NWA, WCW territories. Right. Um, so that I think that's like 14,000, apparently. So it's a good house for them. But like, besides that, they're doing like 1,200, 2,300. That's what and, I meant. That's um, what I meant by it's cold. Yeah. Uh, WWE, they did have a sellout in, well, it was a big house in Aussie, but I haven't looked at the number yet, but it was decent. But that's the first time I've been to Australia in God knows how long. Well, shit, didn't they have that big uh, super showdown where they really drew like 60-some thousand? Yeah, that was 2016, 2017, I believe. Really? Fuck. Something like that. Really? I might be wrong. No. no, 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 no. It can't be. No, no. It was before that. Or, I mean, after that. It might have been after. I'm just trying to think. It wasn't 2016 or 2017, dude. It was like 2021 or something. It was after the lockdowns. Was it? I think so. But anyway, did you hear the story about they had a hard time getting the fucking... Because they, they shipped the Elimination Chamber over there. I thought maybe they'd build one, but they shipped yeah. it over there. And he got uh, held up by pirates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is. That, that, it's always blowing my mind when it comes to like, structures like Hell in a Cell and uh, Elimination Chamber how do they transport it so yeah. i guess it over there 
buy yeah. shit in this scenario, but yeah, I, I'm guessing they retrieved it. I mean, what the fuck? I'm the the price to ship that over there. That's a big structure, right? That must take its own its own boat, right? Well, yeah, I mean, unless you know they broke it down and then they assemble it, but that's it. But I, I remember reading the stats on it because they always show off the stats and it's like miles of chain and tons of steel and things like that. So if they wanted to assemble it when they got over there, it's well, still yeah, not gonna, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, <laughs> they're not going to have the structure fully built and put that on a ship. Love, love two ships going like next to each yeah. other. <laughs> anyway, so as far as Ryback, um, yeah, it's inter interesting to see if those if there was NDA signed with the parties involved that he mentioned, and if that will come to light. We just have to wait and see, right? It'd be interesting to see if WWE gets in touch with them or. I don't think they'll be looking at sending lawyers after anyone at the minute, especially with what's going on with Vince. But once the Vince stuff gets sorted out with, if it does, I wonder if they'll be like knocking on Ryback's door, be like, right, what have you said? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Well, didn't he just, wasn't he involved in a court case over his name or something? Well, yeah, his legally, he's, he, legally, his name is Ryback now. You know, like kind of like Ultimate Warrior back in the day. Okay, so right. he won that. He won that case, right? I think so. Well, he calls himself Ryback, so I would imagine so. Okay, right. Well, one thing though that I think he does, he is right on, is that how the company will feed bullshit stories to the internet to try to make certain guys look bad. You know what I mean? Because you know how petty they are. Yes, extremely you can't deny that. They are incredibly petty, especially when guys walk out on them and are successful without them. They fucking hate that. You know. That's why they took away your record. That's why they named one of their characters Dupree. Yeah, true. So, uh, and that... and desist telling fucking promoters I can't use my name. Yeah. yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you, it did make me laugh. And I'm not the biggest fans, but how they spun it and made money from it was great. So, but well, they've done the, you know, the two sweet, uh, you know, sign, two sweet. Yeah. And that's what they was doing with Bullet Club, Young Bucks. So, WWE really sent them a cease and desist for them to stop using two sweet uh, hand gesture. Even though I think it's actually a gang sign, like the Turkish Wolf or something like that. Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, X Pac told the story. So, they made a t shirt. And on both the hands, it said cease and desist, and they made like a shitload of money from them t shirts. Hats off to so, them, dude. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, um, this Monday, Chris Masters, Mordetsky, Adonis will be live along with Paul London. So tune in for that. That'll be great. And uh, we'll be watching the pay per view tomorrow on Patreon. So if you're not yet signed up, please do. I'm sorry this morning. I just couldn't. Couldn't make it up in time. It's too fucking early. <laughs> All right. We will see you on Monday. Thank you.